So this is a web browser, Google Chrome. We have a web application. We don't use any plugins, so there's no flash behind it. Um, and I hope the internet will work fine. So the topic is mind mapping in education. There's an, a reason why I chose this topic. There are several reasons for this. And just let me explain why Liam thinks that I'm from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> we are a German-based company, but most of our development or some of our development and marketing sales is in Munich. Uh, it's in Vienna, Austria. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe there are smarter people in Vienna or they are cheaper. I don't know. It's just how it evolved. Um, and Till and Michael founded Meister Labs, the company behind MindMeister in the year 2007. The idea was born um, by using MindChat Mind Manager. It was uh, a non collaborative mind mapping tool back in the days. And Till and Michael used Google Docs, a collaborative text editing tool. So I think it makes perfect sense to be the first one. Um, creating a product that's collaborative and visual. So this is the team. You can see some marketing people, some Android developers, some iOS developers, uh, some sales people. <coughs> um, and the reason... <laughs> this guy is half American. Uh, we have Romanian developers, there are three Romanian people. Who's, who's, who spotted them? Okay. So, the reason why um, my presentation is about education is I looked at the focus of this today's event. It was mind mapping and still is mind mapping at the mainstream. Then I looked at the attendee list and at the other presenters' topics. So, one way to mainstream is, of course, young people who are open, right? You might know this story about this. I didn't prepare this story, but I still try to tell it. The same, pro same guy, he, he wanted to, he's spilling tea into the cup of his professor, and he keeps spilling tea in the cup until the professor says, stop pouring tea, it's full. So this is something we um, sometimes experience that if you know too much or you think you know too much, you have to be open for new concepts. So I believe and we believe that students are more open and more willing to learn more uh, new concepts. And there's another reason um, why I've chose this topic. Um, we are looking at the technology adaption life cycle. I think you're familiar with it. Um, can you say stop when you think that we reach the stage where we are right now with mind mapping. So I'm talking about the innovators who <coughs> create uh, an invention um, that's eventually being adopted by the consumers. That's how the invention becomes an innovation. And then we have early adopters. These are people who are willing to pay a higher price to try out new things. They're risk takers as well. And early majority is um, people who need to see probably their neighbor using some products and then they start using it as well. And I think you get the idea what, what the rest is. So where do you think we are right now? Are we here? Yeah. Here with my mapping? No? Here? Yeah. Here? Yes. Okay. I believe we are around here or I, yeah. I want to believe. So let's say we're around here, right? So a way in addition to focusing on education is also um, focusing on this part, the early maturity. Once you focus on this part, the rest comes. You don't focus on this one. There's nothing you can do about this, right? They will follow when these people are convinced. So that's a critical mass. So it's, I don't think I have to read it out. Okay, let's go back to education. 
I'm really happy that there are um, teachers and educators in the audience. I got also some inputs for my presentation. So this here is something, um, a distinction by Seth Godin, or Gooden, I don't know, how, I'm not sure how to pr pronounce his name. Um, in the pre-connected world, information was scarce. So usually it was processed in its isolation by individuals. So there was not so much about, it was not so much about collaboration as it is today. And in today, information is there in abundance. You can go to a search engine, you'll find anything you want to find, and even, even stuff you don't want to find. So in addition to an abundance of information, we have an abundance of networks. And this is a challenge, I think, um, where educators have an important role um, of preparing students for this changing world. So that's why um, I had this crazy idea of, well, it's, it's not my idea, I think anybody can have this idea, of integrating mind mapping in the curriculum, right? But this would probably need a lot of time since it's political, right? Time consuming and will take probably, I don't know, 40, 50 years until it's really being taught in school, right? So. A tool like Microsoft Word is a, a word processing tool is mainstream. Any student has to write essays in school, for example. Essays and papers and so on. So they know why they should use Microsoft Word, right? But at least I, I, I wasn't taught in school how to create a mind map. I've learned it, I don't know. I, I saw my uncle taking notes in a mind map. Um, he was taking these notes. Um, he was kind of visualizing what everybody was, was talking about. And then it made click. It makes perfect sense to take note in a mind map, right? Because you don't have this linear structure. So I learned it pretty late. Um, another thing why this it could be a challenge um, to include mind mapping in education is that teachers, of course, they need to be comfortable using this technique. I know it from own experience. Um, I went to a business school. It is easy to talk to somebody about something if they know you, what, what you're talking about. But how to explain marketing or sales to somebody who doesn't know anything about it? So that's, that's when I realized that I don't know enough about marketing and sales to explain it to this person. So they can further explain it to somebody. So if you really want to teach something, I believe you have to really understand what it is about, or at least have an idea of what the core concept is. Um, my experience is that you don't have to worry so much about the tools, because students, they just know how to use tech stuff. And also, it is important to teach them. It's a German saying, I, I, I translated in English, I don't know if it makes sense. Actually, I'm half American, but I grew up in, grew up in Austria most of the time, so. Um, the saying, catching a fish, I, I meant, it's not good to create mind maps for the students. You have to let them create their own mind maps. And this is what um, I did. I had this principal of a school, I called him, because they are the first iPad class in Austria. Uh, the iPads are funded by the government. So I found an article about the school, I called him, and he lives next to my mother's place on the countryside, so I paid him a visit. Um, and I wrote down this story, because what we learn is many of our users, we have slightly more than two million users, many of them, they want to have guidance of, of how to apply it into their daily work routine, or how to explain it to others. So I clicked on the link, this is a blog post, this principle was already using mind mapping, so there was no need for me to explain to him what mind mapping is. So I just showed him this video. This video, Michael, my boss, <coughs> I have two bosses, Thiel is also my boss, but Michael um, went to Ikea and he wanted us to create a shopping list. So these are all the mind, mind, mind Meister employees working on a shopping list. 
So the principal of the school, he got an idea of what we are doing, right? And then he did a, a good thing. He said, okay, if you believe that this is something for our students, why don't you come to our school and teach for yourself? So I thought I always wanted to be a teacher, at least for a limited period of time. <laughs> so this was my chance. So you can see this iPad class. The girls they arrived later because they went to a song contest. They won the song contest. But the boys, they are, they're more excited because, um, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I had time to explain the concept to them better. So you see them on their iPads. They're actually using um, a web browser. We have an iPad app, but this is a website. Um, so it also works on the iPad. And the things that we did in this class, it was a two hour class um, lesson. In the first hour I explained, I created a mind map of myself, like where I'm from, what my hobbies are, so that students got a picture of how to apply this concept. I used icons, symbols, and so on. And I let them create a mind map of themselves in the first hour. Uh, one student was brave enough to present his mind map in front of the class. These were elf year old students. And in the second hour, we were working on a collaborative mind map. So all the students in the class were adding um, to the same mind map. It's, it looks similar in the way that um, as the video you have seen before. The principal of the school asked me again to teach three classes, but I told him I have a, I have a day job as well. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe I will teach this year again. But it's always good to, to get a feedback um, and to know what's going on. How much time do you have left? Great, perfect. Another way towards mainstream is by really using a mind map to communicate. Die Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung is a well-respected newspaper in Germany. So they did, they did an amazing thing. I open the link. It's not loading. Okay. So, um, they, once the page is loaded, they have a discussion about organ donors, right? And they want this discussion to flourish. So you see, can see this article and what they did on their newspaper website. They embedded a mind map. So this is not an image, this is it's an interactive mind map. I can drag it around. I can close notes, ideas. So let's make it full screen. <laughs> A mind map is a really personal thing. Probably if I create a mind map, and I also draw mind maps by hand uh, on the iPhone or with, with uh, our tool, it's hard to understand my personal mind map for somebody else, right? But with this newspaper, what they did, um, just let me scroll out and pressing the minus button here so you can see the whole mind map. It tells me the maximum scroll levels are um, reached. Um, this newspaper, what they did is they provided um, their readers with an introduction of how to read this mind map. This is pretty amazing. So they explain how to do it, and they also explain, okay, if you have a yellow um, idea, if you have an idea about donor uh, organ donation, please mark it in yellow. If you have an argument uh, that's pro, Organ donation, mark it green. If an argument that's against organ donation, please mark it in red. So this is something very important. If you collaborate with others, you have to have a, in, a introduction. Like how to use symbols, how to read the mind map. We have to agree on a common ground. Because otherwise, it's really hard to, to understand what, what, what other persons are um, what they mean, and it's, it can be chaotic. So I think this, this new newspaper, they did an amazing job. Let's go back to the side. Of displaying content, and I think this, this is also something that would, will help um, bring mind mapping to the mainstream market. So one is education, and the other thing is 
sharing information, forcing people to find information in the form of a mind map, right? It's a good thing if they, <laughs> if you force them to do, good, to do a good thing. This is a quote I really like. The magic of connecting dots is that once you've learned the techniques, the dots can change, but you'll still be good at connecting them. And I believe mind mapping is something that really, it really makes it easier to connect the dots. So anytime I don't know what to do, I create a mind map. And after a couple of seconds, minutes, it's clear, right? And another thing is, um, we are built up on the ground for collaboration. So we also think that if you want to be creative and you want to develop your ideas, um, you should always have a pen and paper with you or at least some mean of taking notes or your smartphone or what, whatever, your mobile um, map mapping tool on your iPad or on your iPhone. Because you never know when the idea comes to you. And I think the same principle of anywhere, anytime applies to education. <coughs> because learning is something you do and not, not a place where you go to. And also working is something you do and not a place where you go to. So with this statement, I want to thank you for your time and I'm open for questions. <laughs>